por se terem juntado a nós nesta sétima palestra do primeiro seminário de voleibol online organizado pela Xisco. É com muito prazer que vos apresento o Coran Ivanovic, que tem uma larga experiência como selecionador da Croácia, tanto como adjunto e como principal. Teve vários anos, por exemplo, como principal da Croácia e vai hoje partilhar a experiência dele aqui connosco. Estejam à vontade para ir colocando questões no chat, sempre que entenderem. Goran, thank you so much for being with us. It's truly really a pleasure, and I hope all goes well with the lecture. Ok? Thank you. Ok. Ok. Let's start. Hello, everybody. Uh, I would like to say thanks to Xcore for contacting me and giving me the opportunity to talk about my experience. And uh, special thanks to my friend Andre Sa for recommending me for this lecture. And uh, Andre, good luck uh, tomorrow. Uh, also, I need to say before I start with uh, talking about volleyball that I had help uh, from my uh, scout, uh, Sebastian Mavric, he's Slovenian, uh, who worked with me in a senior and junior national team. Uh, and he helped me with uh, preparing the, the video. So, Uh, when I saw the, the, the team that we're going to talk about, I decided to, to talk only about the things that uh, we as a, as a team uh, were able to do uh, and uh, to provide on the court. Uh, because um, I think that would be the most interesting thing. Um, uh, not only about the things that would be necessary all the things that would be necessary to do uh, to be a world champion or to be Olympic champion. So, um, I as a coach, I'm watching the, the I'm woman coach and I watch uh, women volleyball mostly. And uh, I would be happy if I had, I, I can have the team uh, that uh, plays like uh, that has the speed like USA team, that uh, has a uh, height like Russia, uh, that can play defense like Japan or uh, concentration like China. And I would like to have team that plays and have fun like Brazilians. But it's not possible um, to have all that all together. Of course, I would like also to have the the team who can train eight hours a day uh, as the team from the east like uh, japan or china teams they can trade the whole day uh, but we have what we have so it's not possible so we need to adjust and we need to um, put our best things on the court and uh, and uh, make them even better and those things that they are not that good uh, like hide it So I think that's uh, the main main goal of uh, every every coach. So I will talk about women volleyball, about the Croatian national team on the World Championship 2014. So it's the last World Championship, and um, um, we was with the team from the beginning of 2014. So we didn't have so much time to prepare. Uh, it was only three and a, three three and a half months. Uh, but uh, it was not enough time to, to put all the ideas on the court. Um, our head coach was Brazilian, uh, head coach Brazilian uh, coach uh, Angelo Vercesi. Um, and you can see here on the picture uh, our team. Um, the, um, what you can notice that we were really high. Uh, we had tall players. And one of the, you can see here, one of the tallest player was our second setter. And uh, she was also a lefty, so it's important for the uh, later on. Um, all, also, you can see our liberos. Uh, one libero is really tall, and both of those liberos are not uh, liberos. They were like uh, um, res uh, receivers. So we had a problem with the finding libero in Croatia. So we took two players, outside hitters, and we put them uh, on the position of libero. Uh, also, what you can see here, our uh, star of the team, uh, one of the best middle player uh, in the world, Maja Poljak. Um, you will see why I'm uh, paying attention now on her. 
So um, let's let's start uh, with uh, what I wanted to talk about. Um, um, I wanted to divide the the, the team on uh, on these these parts. So counterattack characteristic characteristic of Croatian national team. Uh, what we did when the defense was good, what we wanted to provide on the court, what we wanted to do to, to win the game. So the first was uh, we wanted to finish early, as earliest as we can with the point. So what I mean by that, it was, it was a risk, but we had a tall setters, also she was a lefty, so we put the higher ball in the defense for give her opportunity to attack the second ball. So like that, we surprised the opponent. Um, and uh, it was uh, fu functioning really, really good during the whole tournament. And uh, the part of our individual training was also so uh, setting the perfect balls, setting the balls from the m middle of the court, uh, but also the attack. So we were practicing with them a lot um, with, uh, with, with this part. So um, what is important that they were attacking on the beginning of the set and also on the end of the set. So we were trying to be aggressive uh, during the whole set. So let's, let's see how we did it. Okay, something is not working. Egor, I think we're having a bit of a technical problem. I think you've dragged the window. Okay. I see if it's, okay, it's rolling. Okay, great, it's rolling. So you can see now. Okay, higher ball for setter, lefty, right away attack. So you can see on the score, it's 1-2, it's the beginning of the set, right away attack. This 24-20, again, attack. So we did a lot of great job with, with this it's the, it's the less uh, tactical the thing. Less so, the last one yeah it was the last one because you dragged the window so the first became the last so i'm going to close the last tab okay thank you and now i think you've also changed the location of the presentation so i'm going to search for it okay i'm waiting but we can talk, uh, while we are waiting, we can talk about the second thing. It was an uh, agreement with, uh, with the team. Okay, agreement with the team was if we can play with middle. So I think it's the easiest way to, to make a score and to, to make a point on the middle. It's probably one-on-one. -on -one. Women's uh, Women are not that tall. They can... It's really difficult for the help with the block to block on the middle, so it's the easiest way to attack on the middle. So we had uh, great middle players, one was better blocker, one was better attacker, but we tried to use both of them as much as, as it's possible. And now you will see our best uh, middle, Maya Poljak, uh, how she feels the game and how she adjusts uh, uh, during the game. So. When she's in the uh, front row with a setter, she will open the game attacking um, fast. But when she, when the setter is second line, you will see how she attacks uh, in front of the setter because she's opening the net so that we, in every m moment, we have attack from uh, the 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 every part of the net it's not it's really difficult for opponent uh, blocker to know where we're going to go 
So right. let's, I think yes. you have closed some windows, so I'm going to put the videos as you require them, okay? Maybe it's for the best. So I'm putting the video for the middle player. Okay, thank you. So I have a problem, I don't see, okay. Ok, agora, just one minute, please. Uh, caríssimos, estamos com alguns problemas técnicos, eu peço-vos desculpa, vou tentar solucionar num instante, para que possamos prosseguir com a, com a sessão. Goran, I've explained them the yes. situation. So, I'll only the PDF yes. open. Ok. And I will load okay. the videos as we require them, ok? So, I'm going okay, to so... again... I'm going to again upload the video for the middle player. So go with the. So try closing this window. Can you do it? This one? Okay, let's, let's see. I don't know why, but I have one window here. Okay, just take it makes off. Me... Okay. Let's let's try this. Okay, let's try to watch one more time and start from the beginning. So okay, you see my attack setter is front row with her, she opens back. Again, so she's attacking from from right side she adjusts really well look at her she goes in the middle and in front of the the setter okay can we watch the another video of um, middle attack after yes i will upload okay it. thank you and okay. in this video you will you will see some problems that we have okay let's pause it some problems that we have with the uh, liberos okay so we didn't have libero so we put two outside hitters as libero so what we did we gave uh we gave assignment to every player on the court that they are responsible for giving the free ball because the liberos didn't have the they 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 wasn't really libero, libero and they didn't have the um, in their head that they have to go for every ball. So we had problems with that. So you will see now that some of the times the middle blockers were giving the free ball. Okay. So let's try to see that. So here is Libero, that's good. But in other cases, the middle is giving the ball. So it was assignment in the team. So everybody needs to be careful and everybody needs to be ready for giving the, the free ball. So that was really important for us because giving the assignment to Libero was not good for us so that was really really important so the next what i what was really important for us we wanted to play, we wanted to play really fast so we wanted to open the game with a super ball so fast ball in zone four and fast ball in zone two um like that we wanted to give the opportunity to our attackers to have the to have the um, situation one-on-one -on -one, um, and uh, use that uh, but uh, sometimes we didn't have uh, good timing with middles so sometimes we didn't uh, have one-on-one -on -one situation so for me I think it's really important to have a good timing with the middle and only that the Super Bowl the fast ball in zone 2 and zone zone 2 can uh, provide you situation one on one. So we, we will see, we will see uh, now this how it function. So you will see 
So this is without attack of middle, so we had two blocks. Here we have a middle, so super ball is one on one. So it's really easy to make to make point. So this is without middle, and this is with middle. Oh. Yes. So it's two different different situations. So I think it's really really important middles to have good timing to be aggressive and to go for every ball because only then the super ball the fast ball in zone two and zone four will provide you opportunity to have situation one on one so let's see how we did it with zone two please the same we have so it's one on one situation now we didn't have attack of the middle so we had two on the block the same one on one it's really easy to make a point but you need to have a good good uh, synchronization with a with a middle player Okay, the next thing, the next thing what we wanted to have, but we didn't have, is combination with the front row in combination with back row. So, as I was saying, we were not, we didn't have so much time to, to practice that. Our setters didn't feel comfortable to play combination uh, in counterattack. So, it was our mistake or mistake of the setter, I don't know, or mistake of the days that we had with the team, but we didn't, we didn't uh, produce what we wanted. We did train that on the, on the training, and we tried, but it was not happening on the game. So, unfortunately, I cannot, I cannot show you the videos of that, because we didn't do it. Um, but later on, on the European Championship, that was next year, we were able to do it. Uh, but not that good, but we, we did some of the combinations. And uh, one question. Yes. If, if I may. Yes. If the Libro attempts to play a free ball inside the three-meter line, won't that interfere with combinations in the front row? It will. This is why we think that the giving the the giving the assignment to middles to play the the free ball in three meter lines was really 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 good for the team because the libero is not there to, to interfere. So we think th that decision is really good. But right now I can see a lot of teams. Uh, they are moving all the players and the libero goes for almost every ball. But we didn't want to do that because we thought that it would be too much crowd. So I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and now what was the really big issue in our team was libero as a second setter. So what to do if the setter does the defense? So usually and normally, and I agree with every other team, is setter needs to give the ball to the libero and libero can set the ball because libero are really good players and they can set as a setter. So we didn't have, we didn't have that, so we need to adjust. So for us, was decision was that the setter needs to give the ball to, uh, to a middle player and then the middle player was uh, setting the ball. Uh, luckily, we had a really good middles and they did a really good job, but I want to show you uh, how we did it. So that was not accidentally, it was... So this is why you can see that our libero was not comfortable to set. So we did this. We give the ball to you can see, give the ball to the middle, and they were setting the balls. To the middle, again, they were setting the balls. 
So this was our choice. So we did it on purpose. And I think it was really good one uh, because the set, the, the, the middles uh, were doing the, the job really, really good. So I think we, we did a good we did with that decision. Okay, so this is this were the characteristic of our team when we had a really good defense. So we need to adjust with what with what we had. We wanted to play fast, we wanted to open the game with faster balls balls, we wanted to be aggressive on the middle, also with a setter. And um, and that was it. Combinations wasn't <laughs> functioning in our team. So I think uh, we wanted to, to play like this, and we, we tried to do it. So the next thing, what is really important for me, is what to do when the defense is not good. So we had some, uh, some things that we need to, 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 to do in, in, in the team. So uh, the first was high ball. Everybody plays with high ball. Uh, we practice high ball uh, on the on the training, and we practice the defense uh, with the high ball. And I think that um, we wanted to play faster and to avoid high balls, but it's uh, it's not possible. So when you know that, you need to practice that. You need to have the system that works, that is well organized, and. Um, and discipline, let's say, discipline needs to be on the court for the high balls. So it's really important. So uh, high ball, like uh, other uh, present presenters, they, they were talking about that. It's good because the attacker knows um, how the defense is uh, across the net, so it's not, not bad. And I think uh, what I think is really important uh, when you have a uh, high ball that uh, you need to have really good approach that's number one then you need to try to aim and to attack uh, high you need to try to search for a block out and uh, i i think it's really important to, that you need to search the deep uh, parts of the court um, of course if it's possible it would be great if you can um, attack in a block and uh, return the ball to your team and then give you another opportunity to uh, to do another uh, counter-attack. But um, on the video you will see um, what happens if the approach is not good. The first ball the first ball is when approach is not good so jump from the from the spot we got blocked but when the approach is better, you have better opportunity to, to, to score or to, get, to put the ball in the court. So you can see on the high ball, the defense is really well organized. Everybody are there covering the player. Okay, let's try to watch a little bit more. So, okay, everybody are here. Everybody are taking care of, of the attacker. So high ball. So you can see it's a system really, really well organized and well trained uh, if you want to play high level, high level volleyball. Um, I, I was a coach of junior national team also. So um, what was uh, really important for me uh, when I was leading the team, put them, I didn't give them too much uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, uh, when the opposite was in front row, every difficult ball went to the opposite. And if the opposite was the second row, we were setting in zone four. So this was our agreement and everybody need to, 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 to play uh, by those rules. So I did it like that. It functioned okay. Um, and I think it's, wow. it's good to, to give them um, assignments. Yes. One question. Here, yes. So this is how you organize your high ball. Now, when you are faced with high balls from the opponents, uh, 
how did you use, if you used, triple block, both in women and in junior team? Okay. Um, okay, I, I want to talk about that later uh, when we to, you know, when we talk about block and defense, but uh, we did not use triple block on the end of the nets. We were using triple block for pipe on the middle of the court. And uh, I did the same with the junior national team. Um, uh, we didn't have, with juniors, I didn't have too much time to, to train uh, triple block on the end of the nets. And they, they came from different clubs where they don't play triple block. And um, almost the same happened with the, uh, with the seniors. S not many teams in the clubs using triple blocks. So we decided to play triple on pipe, um, but two blocks on the end of the net. Because our main characteristics of the team was... Uh, uh, that we were really tall and we had really good block. So um, we were feeling really safe with two girls on the block. Okay. Welcome. So when the defense was not good, uh, we, we said um, on the meeting that we, ca we cannot allow ourselves to make a mistake. So if you have to, if you cannot attack, Tip if you have to. If you can attack with the tip, do it. If not, tip short or tip long. Try to make um, difficult if difficult for the opponents, but don't do a mistake. Um, you will see now that uh, the tip is really good uh, way uh, of uh, tactic in difficult situation. Uh, you can do a lot with the tip with that short ball and. Uh, we were using that really good. So it can be really good attack also, if it's, but also really good tip can give you, give you right away, uh, right away point. So what I wanted to say here with tipping is, um, I like to say to my players from zone four, uh, I like to tip, uh, short diagonal ball towards player uh, uh, who is in zone 4. It was like that. Uh, he needs to come forward and like that he's out of the game for counter-attack of the opponents and also he's in the way for the attack from pipe. So I think this is really, really good, um, good tactical if you cannot attack, if you cannot do something with the ball, tip uh, towards a player, attacker from front row, because it will uh, make double damage uh, to opponents. Okay, and what we wanted and what coach wanted, the head coach, the Brazilian guy, we wanted to fight for every ball. So we want the team to, to go for every ball, to, to leave their heart on the court, to be really patient, but to play like a lion on the on the de in the defense, be because the us as the coaches we were like that. We were like uh, really energetics, and the coach was really energetic, and he wanted to give that energy to 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 to, to the players and to put the energy uh, among the the players, and. Um, you will see why. So I want to show you his energy and what we wanted to produce um, and to give to the girls. So let's see the energy that we wanted to give to the girls. We will not watch the whole video. Let's start from here.
okay now you saw the the energy that uh, coach had and he wanted from the girls to play like like you saw him playing okay to try to save every ball go for every ball and to be really really patient in defense because i think it uh, on the end it uh, it's good for the team uh, and it's good for the positive energy on the court um okay so that was the characteristics that we tried to do on the court when the ball was perfect in defense and when the ball was not that good in the defense we tried to follow those rules and we tried to, to play every game by those rules so um this is this is it so uh building a game sorry Koran, there's a question for you related to okay. Go okay, it. sorry. Thank okay. Uh, to go to every ball, task, can you practice that or is it just something that you ask and then actually made it? Okay, of course, you need to, to, you need to, to practice that. It's um, when you work defense, uh, you, what we try to do um, when we did defense three or four three players two or three players on the court other players were around the court they were cheering they were trying to give um, um, lots of noise and lots of um, how should they say uh, positive energy to, to the ones that they are on the court doing the defense and uh, to give them like extra power to, to, to do the really heavy uh, and difficult exercise. So you need to develop the, the, this, this mental, mental thing among, among, among uh, the team. So yes, you need to practice um, all the time. Yeah, yeah, you, you need to practice that. So I think on YouTube, you can see the videos also, the Japanese libero is trying to, to, to do something crazy like uh, um, she's doing defense I don't know how, how how much time and everybody around everybody are cheering giving her like come on go go for every ball it's crazy exercise but I'm, I think something like that you need to, 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 to do with your team also yeah okay so is that the only question let me check the first one. Sorry. Uh, that's it. OK, OK, OK. Yeah. OK. So of course, you also need to give some rewards for a good job. Um, I don't know, something, uh, what you can, what you can, uh, so that uh, team have some extra extra reward after well well uh, job well done so you can do lots of maybe give them free day or free training or i don't know give them uh, shorter training usually they like to do that but you can do a lot of lots of things okay so building a game model for the counter attack i put some things that i um, consider really important um how to build your game to have better counterattack. So we cannot talk uh, without uh, talking about service. Uh, so serve can be tactical, uh, can be risk jump serve. You can use both. We did use both. And um, of course, tactical serve, um, what we did and every team uh, is doing uh, that you aim the, the, the worst uh, receiver and you want to make pressure on that worst receiver. Of course, you need to follow the statistics, uh, the aspects uh, of percentage of how, uh, how they are doing with the, with the reception. But um, every team is doing that, so it's nothing special. Um, but uh, what we wanted to do, something special, and I think we were doing really really good and uh, unfortunately we don't have that this video but um, what we did really 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 good tactical short serve so but, uh, uh, I, yeah i wrote in the chat that that was our fault so we apologize to you and no, to the participants 
it's it's not a problem it's it's okay but uh, I, I will try to explain with words tactical short serve was one thing that we did on that world championship really really good every player um, did that tactical short serve so on the video you you should saw like five different players doing tactical short serve what we wanted to do was aiming the short uh, with that tactical short serve we didn't search for ace so we were searching for difficult serve for the opponent that would allow us uh, more time to to do better blocking and defense so we were aiming the best uh, best attacker from front row and uh, he needed to go forward to take short serve and like that we were unable him for attack and we were making our minds and concentration on other players also we were doing the short tactical serve on the middle players because usually middle players are not that good with the reception so like that we also had a difficult a difficulty on the opponent for um, uh, make uh, 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 lots of uh, attacks so it was uh, allowing us to more time uh, to build block and defense so um, I think the short serve is something that we as a coaches need to use uh, more and more and uh, what I did with juniors I also use the tactical short serve and I can say by my experience this is really 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 good because the juniors as a players they are the the level of knowledge for serving is almost equal as a senior player but the level of knowledge of reception of junior player is not that not that good as a senior so even knowing that you can uh, you can uh, achieve even more with that tactical short serve so this is a tactical short serve and uh, also we we had a um, jump serve uh, it's a risky one um, it's every serve needs to be on the edge uh, of uh, like um, edge of the risk so will you um, make a mistake or not because we can see now the 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 high level volleyball is almost everything about really good serve so you need to be on that edge if you want to to play good and if you want to give uh, uh opportunity to yourself to have block and defense so i think it's a uh, reasonable to have a uh, risk and we also had um, a jump serve two of our players so let's see how we did it So sometimes you make ace, sometimes jump serve is really easy to receive. And of course, sometimes you miss it. But what is really important, we need to be aggressive. We need to... Okay, this is a mistake, but the next was ace. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It's like that, but without aggression on serve, I think it's today it's not possible to play. You need to play really, really, really strong with the serve. Uh, okay, so so this is the serve. I think you agree with me uh, on this, and uh, we can skip the serve, and we can go on block and defense. Uh, thing that. Uh, we had and what i'm using also was uh, is three three systems on block i'm talking about blocking the outside hitters and um, what we use um oh let me let me just i just remember uh, let me return on service 
um, about the uh, about the service. Um, before the game, we always talk about service, and before the game, we tell the players who can serve what, where, and who can risk or not risk on the serve. So we talk before the game and on the on the match during the game us as a as a as a coaches we can uh, we can feel the player and maybe we can tell them okay don't risk because we can feel that he can do a mistake so it's our job to follow the player and to, to realize the psychological level of the player when he goes on the serve so what i like to do uh, they have the assignments uh, they know where to serve, but I like to remind the player, okay, serve here, serve there. But I also give them, um, uh, I give them um, free hands, so open hands, to change the serve, because they know the best themselves. So if some of the players, especially juniors, they go on the serve and they feel really nervous or they 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 are free i give them open ha open hands and i i tell them okay just put the, the ball in the court if you don't feel um like free to, to risk the serve so i think it's it's good for juniors but the seniors their the level is, is much higher so they can risk almost every serve but um the, yeah sorry yeah. Do you want your players serving closest to their defensive zones, or uh, might you ask the opposite player or the setter to serve from position five, let's say, for technical purposes? Mm, uh, I didn't understand. What the? What do I want? Sorry, right. one if, more time. Do you want the server to serve uh, near? her own defensive zone, so let's say the opposite and the setter would oh. serve from position one, or do you let them oh. change depending they on can the tactical? Okay, sorry, now I understand. Uh, you, usually they do, they, they serve close to their d defense zone, but some of the players uh, are changing by themselves. I'm not, I'm not giving them assignment, you have to serve from here or there. They, I, I give them also uh, free will, so they can they can choose by themselves. So I I don't think it's really important because I think there there is enough time to, to get back in in defense. But what I wanted to say uh, how I uh, uh, how I practice this I put the elastic rope between the the antennas. Uh, I put some space between uh, uh, elastic rope and the and the net. So the, the, the goal is to put the ball between the net and the elastic rope. So this, this, um, um, this gives me a uh, possibility to, uh, to have the risk serve close to the net all the time because the, the ball needs to be between the net and the elastic rope. And also I put the two lines on the court um, to... Um, to give them um, to give them assignment that the first ball needs to be in front of the first first rope, so it needs to be short short serve, and the second ball needs to be deep in the court, so the ball cannot fall between those two 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 ropes. So they have to go or deep or or short. So I think it's uh, visually really really easy for them to practice serve with those two exercises and what i think is really important when we practice service is uh, not to practice service on the end of the court or on the end of the practice i think it's really bad because when they know that it's end of the practice automatically they're mentally they go down they start relaxing and they, they think that the the, the, the practice is over. So what I like to do and what I usually do, I have service as a main part of the training. So like that, the mentally they are prepared really, uh, really good and they know that it's the main part of the training. So I think uh, that's really important. Okay, that's it.
Um, so let's go um, ahead with the block and defense. Um, I'm using three systems, and uh, we did the same with the uh, with the senior national team on the world championship. We call it box system. It's a system where um, um, where you close the 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 parallela and where where the player uh, who is on the line goes for the tips for the short balls and the player zone six goes on parallela and like that we have the square in the defense we call it box um, and uh, let's 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 see the video of of that. So we closed parallel. Okay, this was not good, but we were in the box system. You can see the square. Okay, so four of the players in the defense. Okay, this is now the square. And now you will see. So we close the ball, close parallel, and four of the players in defense are playing in a box. Box Susan. Okay, so this was one type. When you close the ball, when you close parallel, one is going behind the block and zone six goes on on parallela for long balls uh, the other si system was semi box uh, it's the same but the zone six stays in, in the middle of the court uh, behind the block so let's see that so zone six stays one of the player goes behind the block but zone six stays. So she was really forward and like this. So we are we are leaving long parallel open and almost uncovered in this situation. That's risk that in in white moment you need to take. Sometimes you by statistically you you know where the opponent will attack and what he will do so you need to leave one part of the court open and uh, and uh, try to 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 do with the uh, uh, the best that you like think ahead that will happen and the the third the third type of the the defense was semicircle uh where every player and you can see that really often Every, we, where you leave parallel open, everybody are playing uh, in, a, in a semicircle, everybody are back, but also everybody needs to take care of a short uh, roll shots, tips, and stuff like that. So let's see this. It's really common, common, common thing to see. So everybody are back. So we have a hole in the middle of the court. It's really difficult to defend that free space in the middle of the court, but also so sometimes you need to you need to leave something open. So this was block one and one, but the same system. So open parallela worked perfectly. So everybody are playing on the six six and a half meters. Everybody are back. So, what type of defense are we using in what moment depends on the opponents, depends on the rotation, depends on what you have, what you have in block, and depends on uh, what you think that is going to happen. So, um, we were using those three types and we were changing all those three types for uh, every opponent for every rotation and we were changing during the game during the set uh, we, we uh, always started the game with one system and we tried to play with one system almost whole set but we were changing the system with block defense um, if something didn't didn't uh, work uh, okay Okay, and 
uh, our our and what I think is really important to have the defined how you will play against middle blocker. Okay, this is a uh, yeah. Uh, you have one question uh, regarding okay. the semicircle defense. Okay, sorry, sorry. The semicircle defense is used most with B and C or with ball A. Okay, so now I will need uh, need a little bit explanation. What is ball A? Because we don't have those terms. The A this ball would be a perfect ball for the setter. B ball, let's say a ball that is three meters away from the net or well pushed into almost position four. C ball okay. would be like everything else. Okay, so I will I will I will say like this. Uh, we were playing really high level vo volleyball. It's world championship. Everybody can do almost everything. So what we were doing and what we tried to do, we were playing really narrow on the net. So we wanted to be aggressive on the net with three blockers. So. Uh, we tried to close and we tried to play all three defenses for every ball a b and c every ball so if our decision was play semicircle was for every every ball so we we wanted to be fast we wanted to close we wanted to to, to play um by our decision so um it was not regarding the opponent's uh, opponent ball okay okay so gonna just to check if yeah. we all understood okay so you don't have a predetermined way of defending for type of ball you do that depending on the opponent on the specific yes. player that is attacking and also you change during the game yes yes because uh because we were doing our block and defense regarding the opponent and their abilities and their characteristics so um we were we were searching how to play better block and defense regarding the opponent the attacker not the ball that will come okay thank you oh, okay okay so the the next thing was uh, against middle attacker uh what we were doing we tried to we we played narrow and we tried to help we didn't do that a lot because it's really difficult but we tried uh and uh, what was the the main main uh main goal uh zone six follow the the middle player and try to go in the empty space between two blockers so that was it so let's try to see the the that video please so zone six will follow the middle one step to the back to the right sorry again one step to the right a little bit to the left so again one step to the right so zone six was following following the, the the middle and zone six was covering the 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 hole between two two blockers other players are playing almost the spot where they are there is no no much time to move a lot and uh, this is this is this was it um what we did better is against attack from second line um, because there is a little bit more time to close the block and we did good we trained that a lot uh, we wanted to be aggressive on the block we wanted to close 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 the block and to have three people on the block so you will see that uh, we were doing that job uh, really good so when the ball was piped from the opponent we we were able to to to, to jump three or mock okay let's let's see that how we did that so three on block again you can see okay let's see zone six sorry once again zone six will move towards the where was the 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 space between block okay one more so she saw the space and she went one step to the right 
Okay, so once again. So we tried to jump. Okay, so this was good. Triple block. So the reason to help your players to have more uh, opportunity to jump three on block was to keep them a little bit closer. Okay, so it's easier for them to, to react and to jump. What I like to do, especially with juniors, uh, because they don't know to move uh, sideways, I like to move like a half of the step, uh, zone two and zone four, half of the step off the net. Uh, because if the opening setter sets in four or in two, uh, the left and right outside will not be on the way for a middle player. So I put them like a half of the step off the net. And this allows a middle blocker to, to move freely on both sides. So I don't know if you agree, but I'm using that a lot. Okay, so let's try to see how we did with the second line. We didn't use triple block uh, from attack from uh, zone one. So we were doing this uh, we were leaving parallela open because over there at the back was uh, libero so we should assume that the libero is really good in defense so we will give libero space to, to defense uh, the player from zone two was going for the short balls because for, because of that narrow system on the net um, so the players from zone two went for the tips and zone six and zone one were playing in a semicircle, um, uh, semicircle system. So let's see uh, attack from zone one, please. Okay, so parallel open for libero. Oh, you can see here one more. So free ball. Okay, so open parallela. Zone two went for, for tips and for short ones. Okay. And zone one and zone six are playing are playing back. Okay, so I think you, you understood the the principle what we wanted to do. All of those systems uh, against every every attack was uh, trained and well organized on the training and we tried to talk about them and we did all those sy systems during every training and uh, during all the preparations. Um, we were studying, watching the videos and trying to do the best with, with block and defense. Um, right. Yes. Uh, with respect to blocking strategy, did you ask your middle blocker to wait uh, to follow the opponent middle attacker or to follow the setter? Understand. Okay, so this was regarding our 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 uh, middles. So uh, one of the our best middle was uh, Maya Poljak. She's so so good player so she was waiting and she was reading the game so she was doing what she thought in that moment that is the best uh, because she was so so good in that but for the other middles we were give them assignments jump with middle or wait with middle that was depending on the opponents that we had across the net and what we thought that it's going to happen uh, in specific rotation. So if we knew that the attack of the middle uh, is really, really uh, um, uh, 
um, it's um, it's like um, I don't know the word, but that probably it's going to happen. Then our middle was jumping with the other middle. But if attack was not like uh, we thought, ma maybe attack will not happen. Then we said to our our middles, wait, wait, wait. Usually we were waiting. Um, not not that much. We were jumping with the with the middles. So usually we were waiting and try to react on uh, on on the ball. And like the serve, you did that on a rotation by rotation basis, or more like uh, generic information before the match. It was generic information before the match regarding the open opponent and what they are doing in rotations. So some 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 players uh, some uh, opponents team always play with middle like we do like uh, so everybody against us knew that we're gonna set to Maya Poljak so everybody knew that and our setters feel felt really comfortable to give the ball to Maya Poljak because she was great player and uh, everybody knew that and we were doing that so it was like that so we all she had two blocks all, almost all the time but what we can do she's She's a great player. She knows how to handle that. She knows how to use block out. She knows how to tip. And this is it. It's, it was, uh, it was, uh, we wanted to use her. So we were doing that regarding the, the two blocks. So and that was the, it. Okay. And in the junior teams and youth teams that you pushed in Croatia. Yeah. Probably many setters from that age won't be as good playing long distances. In those cases, did you ask your middle blocker to follow the setter or to wait in the middle? Usually, usually we were following the, the middle, like uh, wait the setter, follow the middle and stay close, closer to the setter. Yes, closer to the setter. Okay. We were, we, I, I'm using I'm using that. I think it's 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 the best thing to do. I think it's the best, and I, I agree with you that uh, um, about the quality of the of the setters and uh, and what they can they can do on the court. Okay, and going on the rules for free ball and for cover was uh, the similar as we were watching uh, on the presentation before. We use two types of uh, cover, uh, system 2-3 two, three and 3-2. Three, two. So two people uh, in the front row and three in the back and vice versa, uh, depending on the situation. If we had um, opportunity and uh, we, we went uh, in the system 3-2, if not, we, we, we went with two players closer to attacker. And also, it depends if the setter is front row or back row, and also depends if the the, the middle goes fast uh, or not. So, few few things that you need to to, to to do with the team, but usually it was the system two three in the back back row. Okay, so let's try to see uh, rules for cover and how we how we did it. So high ball, three in the front row, two, three, uh, two in the back row, because we were close. And now it's too close to attacker and three in the back row. So both of the systems were used. Here three and two are back. And also here is two following the attacker and three are taking care of the deeper balls. So we were using both systems. Uh, regarding the the situation, but we were talking a lot about that everybody needs to go and take care of the attacker. So that was the main goal: go and take care of the take care of the attacker. The exercise that I'm using for uh, practicing this is I put six six on the court, and uh, but every 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 six players are playing on their side. So we are setting normally in zone two, in zone four, and uh, but it's without the attack. So attacker jumps and he returns the ball to to his sides, 
and he gives the ball to one of the uh, one of the player who is doing the the cover, and they are continuing uh, with the game. So they do defense. The setter goes for the ball, opens the game with the attack from other sides, and again they are moving on the other side, uh, repeating repeating the the sequence. So the other side jumps and they return the ball to to the defense. So this is really good for me. Uh, I like that that exercise, and also I like exercise when uh, uh, I, with the coaches, we 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 uh, stand on the box with a big uh, with a big t table, and we are we are um, doing the block. Okay, so the attackers they play normal six on the court, but they are attacking in the in the in the square. So I'm. Uh, putting the ball back to the to the team. I can uh, put a strong ball. If I put the, the the table like this, I can put higher ball. If I put the table like this, so um, I like this exercise really, really, really a lot. And with the younger players, um, they don't have the mentality to go for 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 cover. So in the game, I give them assignment. After every attack that you do, you need to run to, to the attacker and you need to touch the, 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 the person who did the attack and then return to a defense. So after every attack, you need to run to the player, touch the player and go back to the defense. So this gives them the, uh, the sequence that they need to follow the player and that they need to go to make a cover okay so i like this, this those three exercises a lot okay so this was regarding the block and defense and regarding the scouting the opponent and establishing specific aspects of counterattack was was like this um the first thing that i'm doing and what we were doing was uh, trying to recognize technical specifics of the players and tactical specifics of the player. So, especially, especially from the setter and attacker. So we were we were paying attention before uh, video analysis. Every coach was watching the the, the videos, and they, every coach by himself try to, to find specifics of uh, every player, technical and tactical. And then we get together, we were talking about that specifics, and then we, uh, we were uh, saying those specifics to, to our girls, and then we are showing them on the videos. So I think it's really important um, to, to see how setter is setting when he's setting in front how uh, he's uh, putting his body and his hands when he's setting back, how, how his hands are when he sets middles, and also the attackers. How is approach when they attack parallela, how is approach when they attack uh, cross or diagonala. Uh, so every player has, has uh, specifics. Also, uh, how they um, react when the ball is not perfect and stuff like that. So, um, after scouting, we were establishing rules for block and defense. So, uh, on the video analysis before the game, we were saying, okay, uh, block defense, we will start with this, we will use against a uh, specific player, we will use this defense, uh, against specific player, we will use this defense, and we were trying to follow those rules and uh, this was really important for us and information about opponent block and defense is really important because when you have counter-attack you need to know how the opponent team is reacting and how they will be uh, in block and defense so this allows you and the, it, this gives you opportunity uh, to, 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 to attack free because you know how they are um, set up in, in the defense. So 
this I think those things are really important uh, usually we were watching the video three times uh, the first was watching the attack uh, after reception by rotation uh, then we were watching what uh, uh, they are attacking what was uh, mostly attack by every rotation so where the ball will go and uh, characteristics of the players and um, watching that we were doing our definitions and establishing rules of block and defense and also in that first watching we were uh, saying where we will serve so this was the first watching video the second watching video was uh, opponent service and how they are doing the block and defense and the third watching video was especially individually we were watching the players and uh, we were establishing again how we will do our block against those players so those were three three times uh, watching videos for every every game uh, okay a yes question if you don't mind yes so you played against many different setters in the european championships and also in the world championships could you provide some specific cues that some set let's say a very good setter but a very specific cue that you knew what her intention was beforehand okay so i can remember right now the setter from germany uh, her name was vice um, you can you will know so when you look at her, you will know when she will set in zone four. So her position of the body, I will try to, to imitate this, was uh, her hands were so much in front of her, okay? And she, when she was setting back, her hands were so much higher above the, above the hand. So looking at her hands, right away, you were able to predict where she will set so this is like this we were watching her hands that 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 was our main goal watch her hands and 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 you will know where she will set you were thinking about that yeah and did you uh, play against setters whose hands did not give that cue away so we had to oh, yeah. for other uh, behaviors oh oh yes of course uh yes especially uh, japan setters were like really hard to read so we were searching the body movements and we were searching uh, how will they if there are some specifics uh, when where when she will set in the middle because the japanese team they had not tall middles but they were really really fast so what we um, recognized was that um she was returning her left shoulder towards the the middle and because they were not playing the 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 first attack close to the setter they were going uh away from the setter in the space between our two blockers so she was returning her body towards the, the middle and back then we knew that she will set in middle so we recognized that movement uh but sometimes it's it's impossible sometimes it's uh if the setter is really really good uh, it's almost impossible to read because um the setters can play with with, with you with the middles they can put their hands uh, in front of you and then in the last moment they can set from here back so sometimes you cannot rely on the hands of the setter but you, you you should try to, to 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 read and you should try to give your best to read and to, to give as little help as, as you can to to your to your uh, to your middles great <laughs> great Goran. and the other question pertains uh, block and defense so okay. let's say you are playing against a very strong team in attack so your block your defense your three different systems they are not working or they are not likely going to work. What was the most exotic 
or out there uh, thing that you did against an opponent? Let's say a very strange blocking uh, strategy, for example. Okay, so the exotic thing, it, we had one, uh, one um, situation uh, in the World Championship. The second round, uh, we played against Azerbaijan and they were killing us with the opposite player. Uh, uh, she also played on this European cha Championship, uh, Polina Rahimova, and uh, she, was, she was killing us. She had so much points and we couldn't stop. So in one moment, we, we, we put three blocks on her uh, and we opened some space. So we put three blocks, we uh, opened the parallela and we put two players on parallela. So Libero plus zone six was on parallela. Three blocks were covering the middle of the court. One player uh, uh, that was uh, left there um, was uh, was alone on on cross on diagonal. We didn't know what to do, but we tried with everything. So I, I cannot say that we achieved because we lost the game. But sometimes you need to you need to to try to do your best. We tried with one block, two blocks, three blocks. <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't stop it. It was her day and it was uh, her game of, of her life. So sometimes you can try to do something, sometimes you cannot, but um, you should try. Yeah, of course. Also, when with reception, if you cannot receive, why not receive with two players or why not receive with four players? Of course. So tr try. You need to try. I, I, I'm always for try to do it and then you will, you will see if it's working or not. At least try for a few points, one or two points, and then change and get back to your system of, 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 of the game. Because even if you play two or three points, something differently, maybe the opponent will pay attention and maybe the opponent psychologically will think, okay, oh, something is different, let's try something else. And you will, uh, you will, you will uh, achieve what you want, uh, keep her out, out her, her uh, best, what she is doing. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Goran. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I think okay, so I think I, I said about everything what I think is important but in a manner of what we were doing. Uh, and um, those things were trained, those things we wanted to play uh, fast. We wanted to play aggressive on block. Those were our characteristics. Uh, we wanted to, to attack the first ball with the setter. We wanted to play a lot with the middle. We want. In, I'm talking only about counter attack, of course. Uh, we wanted to, to, to play a lot with middle. Uh, we wanted to play fast on the end of the nets. Uh, sometimes we did it. Sometimes we did not. But uh, on the end, always you have high ball and good block and defense system and you need to be really careful with with that and really uh, organized and uh, let's say really patient really patient with uh, with those elements and uh, and that's it with service always on the edge of with a risk uh, because this is the modern volleyball and Goran, did you have any opponent that due to their quality forced you to play with single block uh, a lot of time and how did you manage to to adjust okay so yes uh, i had this situation especially with juniors uh with juniors uh, i knew i had uh, two two middles that they were really good uh, attackers but not that good blockers so uh, in the beginning of my preparations that will last for two weeks I knew that I will not be able to to have two blocks on the end of the courts I knew that and me and my team were practicing that 10 days one-on-one -on -one situation and in that moment we were leaving parallela so the 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 player behind the block was on six meters covering the, 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 the line. The middles uh, were, after taking care of the middle, they were going for the tips. And 
other players were playing in semicircle. Uh, 10 days, I can say, uh, by my experience, 10 days every day we practice that. And I, I am so surprised how well uh, that functioned. It was great. It was great. But with seniors, uh, usually this happens when you don't have a good reception and when your team is like going down and when you feel that everything is lost and then concentrations going, going down, psychological, the girls are not uh, concentrated and then you are in that position. Then you have to play one-on-one -on -one, and we use the same tactic. So the middles are going for tips and everybody else are playing semicircle system. So thank you, Goran. Thank you so much for your time and for your presentation. I'll just ask the, the attendees if there's any question left. Thank uh, you. Caríssimos participantes, ainda tem alguns minutos. Se quiserem colocar mais alguma questão ao Goran, aproveitem. Não é todos os dias que estamos perante o selecionador da Croácia. Goran. Yes. Any last thoughts before uh, we move on or while someone comes up with another question? Um, uh, no, I just um, I'm, I just want to say that the last last uh, presentations, I, I was watching every presentation, but I didn't understand a lot. So uh, I'm sorry for that. But uh, um, I, I want to say that I'm really happy for uh, for being here and to uh, uh, the opportunity uh to 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 be a participant and uh, i will watch every other session and uh thank you thank you a lot and uh, um, if everybody has some questions uh free to ask uh oh this is my uh the last uh, slide this is my scout and this is our picture from uh, first european games in baku 2015 uh, and uh, what to say? Uh, I know that everybody are here because they love volleyball and we love to talk about volleyball and uh, I think almost everybody are the same. So um, good luck to everybody in their future work. I wish you all the best. I wish you, uh, Jose, all the best and uh, uh, I hope that we'll be in touch in the future. Agora, once again, thank you so much. Caros participantes, agradeço a vossa presença e conto novamente com vocês na sexta-feira para a palestra do André Sá. Muito obrigado e uma boa tarde. Agora, see you, we'll keep in touch and I will now end the event, ok? Thank you very much. Hi to everybody.